I think American independent fans would absolutely love it. And I challenge anybody who says they don't get Lucha go to a show. It's one thing to see it on TV. It's another to be in the crowd and feel it. It's a different crowd than what I see at American wrestling shows. And maybe there was nothing more evident about how different it was than a celebration for Vampiro. Vampiro, I suppose, is doing, um, I guess it's a farewell tour. It's a retirement yeah. tour of sorts. And so from my understanding, he's going to hit a few different promotions, but I, I don't know for sure. Do you believe that was the last Vampiro match in AAA, at least for now? Yes. yes. Well, I mean, look, I'm going to, I'm going to say everything it's, and I, but I do, I, I think, um, well, Conrad, look, I'm going to, you're going to take this blip and going to run it in about six months when he does a, a another retirement tour. But I, I do. And I think the, the way it's laid out over this entire year and they've done big, big box office. So that's what would make me say, is it his last match? I do. I think what a send off. He had a incredible send off in Monterey, uh, obviously a major market, uh, Tijuana, uh, up, up North in Mexico, um, you know, he, he had a send off there, but I think to bring it back home and the way everything was laid out and the story of the match, um, folks, um, we'll get into it here. Conrad, did, let me, well, before we do that, when you watched it, obviously you didn't know what to expect. Did you understand kind of the overall arching storyline, if you will, of the match event? Yeah, it felt like it was, um, and boy, I, I'm not meaning to diminish it. It's just the best example I can give. It felt like almost like a ghost of Christmas past type story where here's all these people through the history of Vampiro's career who are now showing up for one last final battle. And, you know, I, that was the interpretation I got from not only me piecing together what I could, but they had a pretty good announce crew and Larry Dallas and, and, uh, and our buddy, I, I, I'm a big fan of Dabrowski as like the main voice. And I think he's underrated. But he did a good job, I feel like, carrying the explanation. Right. So even if you don't watch AAA on a weekend, week out basis, you could watch that match and really understand. And to, to make an American parallel, you know, the Vampiro character had like this, I don't know, darker, more occult, uh, goth feel. Um, I'm not going to, I know when I make this comparison, people will throw up their their hands, but it's almost like a triple a version of a, an undertaker influence style character. And so when we had all these people from his past and almost like a funeral display, I thought it was really, really well done for what it was. Um, you know, you're looking for a spectacle more so than a match. I mean, if you're looking for a match, maybe that wasn't it, but how about the, a La Parca appearance? Like I didn't see that coming. The son of La Parca. Yes. It, and and look, me and Dorian go back years and years and years. And that kind of, you said the word. I went up to him. He said, what did you think uh, of that? And because I was involved in it twice. And the way it was advertised was vamp. And, and, you know, the day he went in there and the video packages, my God, what a young vamp. But he's, he, since the day he arrived, he was the Canadian vampire and just kind of the progression uh, of the character and people that listen to this may or may not be able to relate it to, like you said, an undertaker, but through the years, but he had all these different rivalries. I mean, Sin Caras, uh, chess man and on and on and on. But the match was a casket match with unknown opponents. And so you, the people didn't know what to expect. And me and Sam Adonis jumped in from the beginning and the people uh, by design and the people, they lit up and man, the, the, to me, it was off to the races. And like you said, uh, La Parca laying in the casket and the, the just the, to me, there was pop after pop after pop and surprise after surprise after surprise. And, uh, you know, El, El Macias, Ricky Benderas, Puerto Rican fans. Um, it was just, I, I thought it was, uh, uh, it's not for everybody and, but it was a spectacle train wreck that was highly, highly entertaining. And to me, a hell of a send off for vamp. Yeah, it was an incredible spectacle. And, uh, I mean, with the fire at the end, I mean, again, you don't have to be a huge Lucha fan and understand all the history to understand, Hey, this was one of their 
marquee characters and names during a previous boom. So think about one of your top stars from the attitude era, having his last match. That's a big doggone deal. And then of course we saw the psychosis that we all saw on, on WCW Monday Nitro and ECW. He was honored and put into the AAA hall of fame. And then in the main event, a crazy reverse cage match of sorts, uh, or maybe it's not, I don't know, but it had a dome on it and the last one out lost and it was hair versus mask and the new psychosis, the guy who's picked up where Nietzsche left off, he was unmasked. Uh, anytime somebody loses their mask in Lucha Libre, it's a big dog on deal. what do you think of that spectacle to close the show on Saturday night, Jeff? For any TNA fan, they know I'm a huge fan of the Thunderdome. That's what we called it in TNA. I yeah. saw this match years ago. I think they called it uh, the Dome of Death. Uh, is, is I, I think maybe in the advertisements uh, this go around. Um, but as you kind of look back on, this was Triple Mania 32, and you know me and Nietzsche, um, uh, Karen got to kind of see firsthand. I don't know that Karen's ever met uh, Nietzsche or whatever, but when we saw each other, you know, we, we, it was in the lobby Friday night at, I don't know, midnight and I gave him a big hug and all this. And we, we traveled together the WCW days. Um, and then my early days in triple a, um, he, you know, he just, he is one of those guys that have truly to me have been a pillar and, and, you know, uh, we haven't touched on this, but this will give, I believe the, my world listeners, kind of um the reality of the situation none other than ray mysterio sent in a video and um you know in spanish obviously but i caught bits and pieces but the high praise and the friendship and the camaraderie you know they go back they're, they're ogs they're day oneers together and 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 the respect that ray showed him and the crowd and it's you know i, I don't throw this term around too too, too lightly but um uh, psychosis a true legend uh, of triple mania lore i mean of triple a lore i'm glad to see he got his flowers and just how it tied in and it was a special night. I mean, just a truly, truly special night when you kind of look back and, and we've touched on so many things. Um, hey, and, and, um, the queen, <laughs> the queen in disguise, we hadn't touched on that. And that was the first match of the night. Uh, there she is, <laughs> um, sitting at front row at ringside and Fabi Apache, uh, who had been a thorn in my side in Monterey at triple mania, earlier this year and triple mania Tijuana shoes a thorn in my side and had another TV taping. And so the queen came down in disguise on the front row. Uh, she, um, Oh, Conrad, she barreled over the, 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 the barricade and cost Fabby the match. And that's how the show got started. So, uh, but it's just a cool night for, to me, top to bottom, uh, so many different moving parts. Um, but it was cool. Very, very cool. 